Let's talk about effect size. We've been talking a lot about p-values and finding out if uh, uh, something is significant. But what I want to do today is to talk about how big of an effect something has on something. Now, this is going to be different than a p-value because a p-value basically tells us how sure that something is related to something else or how sure we are that two groups are different. It doesn't tell us how big that difference is or how strongly the things are related. That's what effect size does. It does. The first uh, uh, type of effect size that we uh, uh, see uh, is the correlation coefficient r. Let's take uh, an example. Suppose that employees go through a training program and we're going to measure their progress as a function of how much time they spend in training. So the y-axis is their skill level. So maybe the first skill, suppose that they were taking a, uh, uh, a training course for um, um, online customer service. The first skill might be politeness. And the second skill might be how they actually, how well they actually do uh, helping the customer solve a problem. And so in this first, and the x-axis is how many hours they spend in the training. And what we can see in here is that the first skill, the politeness, is strongly correlated to how much time they spend uh, trying to uh, in the training. Now the second skill, how much they actually help the uh, uh, person on the, the line is slightly related to the uh, um, the time they spent in training, but not nearly as strongly as the uh, the skill of being polite to the the customer. And we see that the correlation is 0.75 here versus 0.23 here. So we can say that the training had a bigger effect on skill Y1, the politeness, than on skill Y3, the ability to help. Uh, uh, customers with their problems. And so that's why we can say that R, the Pearson correlation coefficient, is a measure of effect size. The bigger the absolute value, the more effect that it has on people. So that's uh, the first type of effect size that we have. Now a second type of effect size can be looking at the difference between two groups. Suppose that we've got a group of leaders and they're randomly assigned to be in two different types of leadership training. So there's no difference between the initial two groups. They're just, they're just randomly chosen to be in one group or another. So one group's not better than the other beyond what chance would uh, uh, dictate. And so several months later, we uh, look at what the two groups, uh, uh, how, uh, how they're rated by their employees. And we have the blue group, and we have the red group. They've received a different uh, uh, training. And we can see that the red group is rated higher than their um, than the blue group. Now, for sure, there's some people in the red group that are rated very low, and there's some people in the blue group that are rated very high. But that's just the characteristic of a normal distribution, which we would expect in, in how anybody would be rated. We're not going to expect a training to make everybody... Uh, uh, good. Just on the average, they would get better than they were before or with an alternate training. And so that's what we see here, that the red group improved more on the average than the blue group. And this distance between the peaks is what we call D. It's Cohen's D, and it measures the effect size of a difference between two groups. So here, it measures the, uh, uh, the effect size of the, the training. The, the red group was, has, was, was D better than the uh, blue. Now, what, what does exactly does this mean, D mean? This is kind of a, uh, this is non-intuitive. Well, D is measured in units of standard deviation like a Z is. So we basically, we take the, whatever the first uh, mean is, we subtract the second mean from it, and then we, we get it to a unified, uh, 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 a standardized unit by dividing by the, the pooled standard deviation of, of both uh, samples. And so th this is what it looks like. For example, if we had a D of 0.24, we would see that there's about this much difference between the uh, um, uh, between the averages. 
a D of 1.04 is much larger, and we see that it's, um, it crosses, the lines cross at about one standard deviation. Remember, the standard deviation is where the line uh, is perfectly straight, where it moves from convex to com uh, concave. And so here would be a D of 1.04, and a huge uh, D of 1.96 would look like this, where almost everybody in the black group does better than the uh, um, most everybody in the um, blue group. Now, it's a lot more common to have effects like this when you do training. Um, you don't turn people into superstars by giving them training. You help them get a little bit better. So that's the second measure of effect size, is Cohen's D, which is measured in units of standard deviation. Now, we can uh, look at effect sizes and see how they're kind of classified. There's a, a tradition that if we have an R of 0 0.10 or a D of 0 0.20, we say that that's a small effect size. It's something that might not be too easy to notice in uh, everyday life. A medium effect size would be very, would be quite noticeable. That'd be like R of 0.3 or a D of 0.5. And a large would say, aha, wow, this is really major. And that would correspond to like an R of 0.5 or a D of 0.8. So when we look at effect size, we can use this table as a, as a way to estimate uh, uh, how noticeable these uh, changes, the correlation or the difference in the averages is. Now, it's also interesting that if we have a D, we can convert it to an R, uh, or if we have an R, we can convert it to a D. They're related, and uh, that allows us to compare uh, the effects of different things, even if they're not all measured in R, or if they're all measured in D. And in fact, when we do meta-analyses, when we combine studies, we want to look at the effects, and we'll combine them all either into an R or into a D, and average them out to see what um, the overall effect is when we uh, compare a lot of studies. So here we've gone over the two main types of effect sizes, R and D, and how they measure how strong of a difference or how strong of a relationship there is between two variables.